Hello everyone. The project is in a relatively presentable and relatively stable state right now, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to show off a few more features that have been done. Um, unfortunately, I did end up getting a bit sidetracked and waylaid with a couple of the things I tried to do. Namely, um, I have revamped the priority system. There was technically nothing wrong with priority in the last video, but on the back end, it required me, the way I had it set up, required me to sometimes type in the priority in two different locations. Um, and if, if it had been expanded further in the future or if the player state machine thing kind of got complicated then maybe it would be conceivable I'd need to type it in in three or maybe even four locations, which is a really bad idea. Um, so I wanted to make sure that priority was just written in one place and on, only one place um, so that there's no room for human error when it comes to typing in values on my end, right? Because the, the very simple thing that can go wrong is you're programming it and you type in 10, but then in another location for the same action, you type in 100. Uh, and then when you're playing it, you're getting inconsistent results and you're not really understanding why. It wouldn't be that hard to track down bugs if that was the problem. It did crop up once already with the uncrouch. I had a problem with it and it turned out that I typed in a different value. Um, and it's just a really bad practice and really bad thing to have. So I wanted to make sure it was in one place. And uh, I went off on some misadventures with that. Suffice to say, I ended up doing the simplest, stupidest, most straightforward thing that would come to mind when you confront that kind of problem. And while it's not the perfect, ideal, clever solution that might exist out there somewhere, uh, I am pretty happy with it. Now that I've actually done it, I realize I shouldn't have hesitated to just do it the straightforward way in the first place because... Whatever minor downsides there are to this approach, they seem fine. They seem totally uh, acceptable to me now that I'm actually working with a system that works that way. Uh, I also refined the animations a bit, but you won't see that in this video because it, it works the same way. It's just a bit nicer on the back end, a bit more consistent and easy to read and all that kind of stuff. Um, last time was mostly about animations. It mostly turned out to be about animations. I think that's mo where most of the features ended up being focused. Not that I had that plan, but I just kind of approached whatever seemed interesting and, uh, e and like the logical easy next step to take. And apparently that turned out to be animation. So I think animations are in a good place already. There's no new features on that front. There's the oscillate and loop and hold and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's all still the same. But there is some new features to show. Um, and this one is, uh, I would say it's new. It definitely required a lot of, uh, a lot of, I don't want to say rewriting, but adding more stuff to the way that motions work. So just to clarify some terminology here, uh, when I talk about motion, I'm talking about the character XY position moving through the world. And um, I don't know what actual terminology in a, a real engine, you know, what's the convention in the industry or whatever. I think of that as motion. And I think when an action imparts some kind of change to the motion of the character, I think of that as an impulse. So that's what I've called these things. Um, in the previous video, all the motion was very flat. There wasn't really that much motion to begin with, right? There's walking and that's flat. Uh, that's just positive x or negative x. I think in this case it's 1.4 is the walk speed. So it's positive 1.4 or negative 1.4. It instantly fits between them when you change left or right on the, the thing. And uh, that's probably a good thing for a game like this, right? I'm not saying that that's bad. Uh, if it's a slow paced action game, which is what I want to build, then uh, you probably want movement to be fairly flat. You want some actions, maybe most actions, to be reasonably simple and straightforward inputs, right? It's just responsive and straightforward. And, and you don't want to be awkwardly trying to position yourself next to an enemy with a bunch of physics and momentum and stuff. You kind of just want to walk up to them and know where exactly you're going to stop, all that kind of stuff. But we might want uh, friction and acceleration for certain things. Now, there was technically some of this in the previous video, in the previous version that I showed, because a jump obviously uses acceleration, right? Your uh, your acceleration or your speed is set to some kind of negative value that pushes you up into the air, and then gravity gradually pulls you back down. Gravity accelerates you back to the ground, right? So it was there, but uh, in the last version that I showed, gravity was really the only example of that. Now it's very different. Now 
Any action can have any amount of impulses associated with it, and those impulses can all affect uh, the speed, acceleration, or friction, and they can also um, act either on the ground, in the air, or both, right? So we can have a lot of different combinations of things. We can have many different things working together. Now, usually you're probably only going to use two or three to get the effect you desire at most. But we can imagine some situations where you want a higher level of friction when you're on the ground and a lower level of friction when you're in the air, right? That kind of makes sense. So there's a, uh, some, there's a way of distinguishing between grounded or airborne. Um, so we have acceleration and friction. And uh, to show what that looks like, there's now a slide which works like this. And you can see that it's not flat, right? When I say flat, I mean that movement is flat. And actually, because um, because uh, acceleration and friction use curves, right? Impulses now use curves in this new system, which is the other big feature here for motion and impulses and stuff. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute. But because they use curves, uh, everything all the impulses use curves now, right? Because it's it's just simpler to use a curve rather than have to look up, you know, does this impulse use a curve? If it does, do this. If it doesn't, do that. We can just come up with curves for whatever we want. So actually, this walking thing is using a curve on its motion. It's just that the curve, which is the default curve for impulses that I have set up, is a, a curve. It's better to think of curves as just lines, right? It's just a line that always returns one. It's just a maxed out line at the top of the graph that always returns one. Uh, we can quibble about efficiency on that because you do technically have to look up the line and whatever, but uh, I think it's a, it's better to take a little bit of an efficiency hit for how, cle uh, how clean it is to always be using a curve on whatever action we're talking about. So the default curve is just a uh, constant, right? Constant one. And all the other curves are somewhere below one or whatever, and it gets multiplied with whatever the value of the impulses i think i'm getting a bit too much into the nitty-gritty here for anybody except programmers but anyway um so what does it mean impulses use acceleration and friction which you can innately understand when you see somebody slide along the ground what does it mean for it to use a curve though that's the interesting thing um this immediately i wanted to use curves for impulses anyway right and i think i mentioned that in the previous video but when i implemented the first version of this which just skipped curves and just like i wanted to make sure that acceleration and friction worked properly before i did anything more complicated so i did it a curveless version of it first and actually I, I found some bugs there with acceleration and friction which were important to work out right but i knew i wanted to have curves and i especially knew it when i did this slide for the first time because what happened the first time was the moment i slid right the acceleration was applied on that very first frame. It just didn't quite feel right. Because if you look at the animation, there's a moment where Victor, we'll call him Victor, there's a moment where Victor, he kind of he's kind of putting his energy into the slide, right? So it makes sense for there to be a very slight delay. And this is intuitive, you know, there's trade-offs to make here. Obviously, I like games that are responsive, and when we say responsive, we generally mean instantly responsive, like how I can turn here. I think that's what people mean when they talk about our controls responsive is in like how fast does my input cause what I want to happen. And when you have acceleration, you know, if you're moving right and then you start moving left, it takes a little while before you're moving left, right? Whereas if you have no acceleration, you're just instantly moving. That's that's responsiveness, right? Um, so generally I value responsiveness and those are the kinds of games that i like as you know but there's always exceptions to everything and um it's amazing you know how obvious it is in retrospect for example the whip is not that responsive right it's or it's not instantly responsive because there's that wind up there's that moment where the whip is not out and it's such a classic castlevania thing it's part of it's part of the nuance and charm of those games is the fact that there is that slight delay to the whip and it's something it's interesting the game doesn't necessarily have to have it right and maybe when this gets turned into something proper maybe if i have a slash button or whatever weapon button we're going to have then who knows right maybe it will come out on the first frame because maybe i like responsiveness too much but you can always imagine scenarios where there there is some kind of delay some very slight delay between the button press and what happens and i think this slide works a lot better with that delay um so 
it's hard to see in the video, but there's actually about two or three frames at the start of the slide where no impulse is applied because um, the impulse, uh, the slide uses custom impulse curves. Now, not everything has to have a custom curve. I have some generic ones set up like a linear one, which just goes from zero to one in a straight line. There's an exponential one or a cubic one or whatever. So we can pick from lots of generic types that I'll probably reuse over and over. But if I really want to finesse a certain move, there's nothing stopping me from just creating a custom curve for that move. And that's what I've done here. So if you imagine a line, right? Imagine a little graph. How the graph looks for this move is that at the very beginning, it's just at zero. For a little bit, it's just zero, 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 you know, for the first little bit of the line. And then it shoots right up to one, right? So it spikes to one, which is we're getting all of that acceleration then after that little bit of delay. Then it falls off really rapidly because we don't want to accelerate much after we've started moving, right? The, the Victor has finished doing his part of the action and all that's left is to carry him along. Um, so if you if you can kind of see it in motion there, the, the acceleration spikes up after a short delay, then falls off. And this is all very easy to set up with the curve editor. You just open up a window, drag a couple of lines around to whatever you think feels reasonable, test it out, tweak it if it's not right, tweak, 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 right, until you get it right. And it gives a lot of finesse, a lot of control over the movement, which I'm, I'm very happy with. Um, likewise, the friction also uses a a custom curve and it's not it's not really strong or anything but what it is is uh, the friction ramps up over time so it spikes at the end I think it's an exponential thing um, if it's not exponential it's probably along that kind of that kind of concave sort of type of curve right um, and what it is is it kind of gives the impression of him coming to a halt right he's not just again it makes the movement less flat he's not just decelerating at a fixed rate for the whole length of the action he decelerates that little bit more at the end so it's like he's kind of putting his weight down and bringing himself back to a stop so he can do something else instead now that now that enough of his speed is worn out that the slide is no longer useful we want to come to a halt uh, where we are and get that over with so uh yeah so these impulses, these curves can be applied to any kind of action. They can all be stored independently for each action or we can use generic ones or whatever. So it just allows us to do some more things with the movement um, and we can add in more moves and stuff. The actual, see it looks impressive when I mix it together with the vault, but uh, the actual, the vault doesn't actually change your momentum at all. It just, it just keeps your X speed what it is, keeps everything as it is. Um, yeah, it doesn't actually apply any acceleration or any friction, uh, which is interesting. I don't know if it actually works that way in, say, Symphony of the Night. Uh, I took some more liberties here with this version than I did in the past because, uh, well, I, I wanted to implement things my way. Um, but I think it adds a little bit of depth. So, for example, if I vault immediately, because I, I lose my acceleration, but I also lose whatever friction I have, it means that the vault goes for a really long distance. Uh, whereas if I uh, vault at the very end of my thing, I just missed the window on it there. If I vault at the very end, there we go. It goes for a much shorter distance, right? And um, uh, what was happening there, by the way, is at the end, you can see there's a, I'll talk about hitboxes in a minute. The blue square is a hitbox, right? Um, when the hitbox disappears, I'm actually no longer in the vault. I'm in a vault recovery, which means that... Uh, I'm in a, a different state than afterwards. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, what I, mean, what I meant was when I slide, when the hitbox disappears when I slide, I'm in a vault recovery. So I no longer, or a slide recovery, messing this up. So it just means that if I jump after a certain point, I, I no longer vault, I just jump, right? So there are two different states with different priorities and different things. Anyway, um, if I vault right away, I get a long vault. If I vault after a little while I get a short vault and that's some nuance it doesn't have to be that way the vault could set the x speed to a certain value it could be a fixed value or whatever um, or we could impart some acceleration whatever but uh, I like it that way I think there's a little bit of nuance and depth to that I don't know if this is going to make it into the game I actually want to make because like I said I do think flat movement is going to be is going to be the the most common sort of thing but like I said, I don't want to be limited by the system. I want to know that I'm putting things in because I want them there and 
not avoiding things because they're going to be too much hassle to add in after a certain point, right? Uh, so what else do I have to show off? Uh, well, there's a couple of things. Um, before I forget to mention, because this is a very easy feature to overlook, since I've been vaulting, you might notice something else about the vault. I'm not actually pressing a direction here, okay? But even though I'm not pressing a direction, my orientation changes anyway. So that's another new feature that I've added in is that, and this, again, all of these things can be applied to any action. They're just things I can toggle on or off for any action, right? So if, it, if it's an, a single action, I can use it on any action I want. We're just changing a couple of values. Um, this one has a reverse X orientation flag, which means that when I snap into the vault recovery, when I move into the vault recovery state, which is when he flips around in the air there, you can see he kind of moves into a bracing position in the air. Once that happens, his X orientation flips around uh, so that whichever way we were facing, we're now facing the opposite way, which just, again, a little bit of nuance, something to it, because uh, you can string these moves together in interesting ways, right? The vault has a very high priority on it, but the vault recovery has a somewhat lower priority, which means we have an uppercut move as well, right? Which means that if I press the uppercut button when I'm in a vault, I get nothing because the vault overrides it. it's too high a priority. But you can see what happened there was I just barely got into the vault recovery phase and then I, um, I did that. But because, again, just a little bit of nuance, because the vault recovery flips your X orientation, it means that you can't, you can't uppercut in the direction you vaulted. You have to uppercut in the opposite direction. So, you know, these are all just things we could tweak Right, I think that's a nice little bit of nuance. It, yes, you can string the uppercut into the vault recovery, but you can't do it in the same direction. And that's kind of an interesting flow to it, right? To do that arc one way and an arc the other way vertically. Something cool about that. I don't know how it works in Symphony of the Night, but uh, yeah, uh, that's the way I set it up. And again, we can tweak all these things if we want to change them. Another new feature which I don't know if I'll use. I doubt this will make it onto the player character in the actual game I want to make, but after images, as you can see. Um, and again, these are done on a per state level, right? So the state just has a flag which says, you know, do, do we draw after images for this or not? So I've generally said that, you know, if something is looks like it has some oomph to it, then draw after images. If not, don't draw them. So we don't draw them when we're walking. Um, I think if you go and look at something like Symphony of the Night, uh, I'm not sure how it works in Super Metroid, actually. I probably should have looked into that. But I think how it works in Symphony of the Night is when the player character is no longer in a state that draws after images, no after images are drawn at all. In other words, when we go from, say, running to walking, all of the after images immediately stop, right? Uh, they stop being drawn. Whereas here... Uh, that data is actually stored on the after image itself, uh, which means that when we change state, they kind of, they linger a little bit, right? It's the little change. I think it's a little bit better. Um, there's some times where it works out nicely. For example, I like when you slide and then start walking in the opposite direction. You can kind of see the slide lingering there for a second. Um, and there's something cool about that, I think. So after images, I just kind of threw them in, to be honest. It's important to have fun every once in a while. Uh, I was working on impulses and curves and priorities and all that kind of stuff and I just went fuck it I want to do something else for a change so I threw in some after images looks pretty cool I don't think they will actually see use on the player character for me assuming we get that far all of this is still up in the air I still feel weird thinking about that idea that I'm making a game it doesn't feel like I'm making a game it feels like I'm fucking around and seeing what happens but anyway uh, but maybe some enemy might have it, right? Some boss, if there's a boss that's fast or something, we might want to have some after images. It'd be very easy to just copy that over to them instead of the player character. Uh, the next major feature, which is, uh, now that I think about it, this is maybe the biggest feature, even though I like impulse curves and stuff and I'm very happy with that and kind of excited about what kind of motions can be made with them. Um, a bigger feature is the hitboxes. So as you can see, there's some blue squares appearing here. Um, and these, uh, if you watch the previous video, I talked about spawner, a spawner system that I have, which is tied to the animation. So that when the animation hits a certain frame, we can spawn things. So there's a, a generic hitbox object, which was an important thing to do. I think that 
this has turned out to be the best thing about adding these three moves. So I've added the slide, the vault, and the uppercut, right? Now the previous moves that I had are the whip and the knife. And the whip and the knife, uh, they are different. They're like objects of their own, right? And in, in Game Maker sense, they are objects. And they kind of have a mind of their own. If you don't know what that means, it means they kind of have a mind of their own, right? Um, but, and they have like their own sprite, for example. But when you're doing a slide, you don't really want, you don't want to have to have a separate sprite for that. You don't really want to have this big complicated thing that has a whole bunch of its own code that's only going to run on the, on the slide action. You don't want to have to make a whole bunch of different objects, which is like, you know, object, slide, hitbox, object, you know, uppercut, hitbox, object, da, 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 da. We want a generic hitbox object that we can just pass some values to and then we can use it for many different things, right? So that's exactly what I have now. Um, and it's it's working pretty well. So I can resize the hitbox. Obviously, I can give it an XY offset so that it appears at a certain point on the player character. Um, I forget what else I can do. Change the width, change the height, give it an XY offset. Um, make sure that it spawns on a specific frame of the animation. Uh, if you look at the slide, you'll see that the hitbox isn't there for the whole thing because Victor's foot isn't extended enough. We want to make sure that the character actually looks like he's attacking before the hitbox comes out. So the hitbox has a delay on it, and that's set up to, you know, when the player character hits this frame of animation, then we get a hitbox. Until then, we've no hitbox. Uh, and of course, the hitbox can have a duration and all that kind of stuff. There's still some work to be done here because um, there's not really any enemies in the game. Technically, the candles are enemies, which is kind of funny. Uh, they inherit from the enemy thing, but we'll see if that survives. I don't know. They might be a destructible, but I'm thinking destructibles might be a different thing. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what way it ends up breaking down. But for now, candles are enemies, right? So uh, anyway, so hitboxes don't interact much with enemies right now. So there's a whole new can of worms to open up there. But the hitbox can... Uh, cause the player to do something else when it's on hit, right? So if it hits something, it can cause the player to go into a different state. So let's see if I can do this. Of course, I miss on the first attempt, even though I've been, I've been having a lot of fun with this and uh, hitting them probably 90% of the time. But we'll see if I can hit a candle with a, a vault. There we go. We get put into the backflip state. And that backflip state is identical to the backflip that you've already seen in previous video there, right? It's it's identical. It has all the same properties and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, likewise, I have a falling state, which is just if you uh, if you fall off a ledge. So let me let me come up here. If I fall, if I jump, I animate like that. But if I fall off a ledge, I animate a little bit differently. So there's a falling state. I don't know if, I, if it should work that way, you know, whatever. But uh, there's a falling state, and if I uppercut something, I'm put into the falling state. I might not want it to work that way. The uppercut is such a strong move that it might just have invincibility on it or something instead. But uh, as you can see, it can do a different thing. So the nice thing here is that these are the same type of object, right? They're both hitbox objects. Um, they're basically identical as far as Game Maker is concerned, but they can just pass different data back to the... Um, the player object. They they trigger these functions uh, in the player object, which causes them to uh, adopt a certain state and certain behaviors. And that that includes all like the impulses and animations and all that kind of stuff that goes into that state. And there is no reason why it has to be a state that already exists. You would probably want to reuse states as much as possible so that the player has a good sense of what they can or can't do at any given time. Like it's useful for that to be the same as a regular backflip because it looks like a regular backflip and the player has an intuitive sense of what a, it means to be in a backflip. But you can imagine scenarios where we don't want that to be the case. Uh, one is this, now we're probably not gonna be sliding into candles, but you can imagine an enemy on the ground or something like that. Uh, say we slide into an enemy but the slide doesn't do enough damage to kill the enemy, we don't want the player character to just end up running into the enemy and taking damage, right? Uh, we don't want them to keep moving forward. So I thought that what I would want to do on a slide is I would actually want to bounce off them a little bit and get back into a regular 
state, a, a standing state. So there's a little slide backwards um, state, and that's unique to the uh, to the to the candle thing. It, it has the same animation as this, right? But it's actually its own state because it 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 reverses the player's X speed when when it happens. So uh, there's no reason why we can't have as many of these as we want. We can put actions on different things. It's pretty cool. Um, one little nuance I like about this is if I'm because it reverses the player's X speed. If I slam into it, I get pushed pretty far back. But if my uh, slide is running out of juice by the time it hits, I only get pushed back a little bit. A little bit of nuance. Again, don't know if I wanted to be that way, but it's all about having options at this phase in development. At least I think so anyway. I don't know. Maybe I'm misguided. Maybe I shouldn't have spent so long on all this. But uh, I think it pays off. It, it feels like it pays off sometimes. Like, for example, when I was doing this and I realized, oh, I probably want a different state for when I hit something during a slide... The actual amount of time it took me to put in that slide hit back was about two minutes. I'm not exaggerating there. Two minutes, just typing in a few values, uh, booted it up once, realized that I wasn't quite being pushed back the way I wanted to, changed a couple of values around, got something I was approximately happy with. There you go. All done, you know? Um, I imagine in actual development, especially with, with my temperament, there's going to be endless amounts of tweaking and, you know, oh, I don't want that to be 1.72. I want it to be 1.73, you know, and that kind of stuff. But uh, but actually getting the skeleton of the motion up and running, uh, very happy with how quick that was to do. So I think the hitbox reactions are in a good place. Um, I forget if there's anything else to show off on the player character. As you can see, I've kind of been messing around with particles. The rain is a particle effect. The, uh, the little embers on the candles are a particle effect. I know a candle is too small to have embers flying it off at all the time, but we can imagine some bigger fire sources we might want some embers on, and I was just trying it out. Um, I also, you'd have to be quite eagle-eyed to see them. I forgot to turn them off, but there's some, there's actually some dust uh, particles that appear when the player character is in certain states, but I'm not happy with how they look right now. They're, they're really just thrown in today. Um, and yeah that system needs a lot of work still because the big problem with them right now is that they're not informed by the player's direction or orientation or anything like that so they're always going to the right and um, I can foresee maybe some headaches with that because particles don't work on a uh, what's the word Euclidean maybe the particles don't work on a Euclidean sort of positive x positive y whatever thing the way they're done is they work on sort of a rotational thing where they're moving forward in the x is zero i think and moving forward in the y is 90 again i think but it, basically it's that it's zero to 360 so it's weird and it's gonna have to be translated somehow and i'm gonna have to figure that out but i am thinking while i'm doing the state machine that it's probably worth getting the particles in there because it seems like the last major thing that's missing i can't imagine there's anything else i'm really missing here on the state machine um after that then it's going to be a case of uh, all this stuff is stored on the player character but it's all kind of it's all written in a very generic way so it's going to be a case of pulling it out of there putting it into some functions in a script and allowing any object to just run those functions and get these kinds of results that's the hope i think i'm probably going to run into some headaches there kind of waiting for the shoe to drop but, you know, even if this turns out to be just what the player character can do and I have to come up with something else for the enemies or end up copy and pasting and having two similar systems, which would be annoying or whatever, even if some kind of big unforeseen obstacle appears, still pretty happy with how it's working for the player character, I think. I think. I am, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's it's hard to be optimistic because I, I really don't have a good sense of what... Um, obstacles are in in my path you know what i mean so so i'm pretty happy with what i've done but on the other hand i never feel like it's not i'm not practiced with it so i never feel like i know what's gonna arrive next you know like i said i think i did i explain this i said that i wanted to add in a random animation type for the candles right and i thought this is gonna be five minutes i'll get that done no problem just to give the candles a bit of flicker you know um and well 
I say it's for the candles. I was actually trying to add it to the player character because I wanted to be part of this system and it'll all be abstracted out to a higher level when when it's ready. But uh, trying to slot it in, it's just amazing. You would think it's so simple, right? Just pick a random image every X number of frames. And yeah, you can do it. It can be done, but I want to do it without having to add another variable or without having to massively restructure all the stuff that's already there. It's about trying to finesse stuff into the existing system, you know? You never never really know what's going to give you headaches. So I do feel like something's going to rear its ugly head and I'll be stuck at some point, but uh, pretty happy with how it's going so far. I don't know how much of this kind of stuff is going to... I'm actually going to end up using... But uh, it's good to have the choice. It's good to have the choice. And, you know, even if it's not, if it doesn't work out for the this project that I have in mind, then maybe another project. You know, you can imagine this kind of stuff being applicable to a platform or, or something like that. Something where movement is a little bit more important. Uh, I think I've run out of things to say, so I'll leave it there for now. I don't think I forgot anything. Particles and after images and impulses and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I'll leave it there. Hopefully it was interesting. Uh, I think it'll be a while, I should say, I think it'll be a while before the next update because after this I'm probably going to move on to enemies. Actually, after this I'm probably going to mess around for a bit because uh, I want to do something that's a bit more just random fun that may or may not go anywhere. Like the particles, I had fun doing them. I'm really not happy with the rain at all. That was, again, this was thrown together very quickly. I love rain levels in games and stuff like that and I'd love to get one but it's because I love rain so much I would really want to do it right so I'd love to have like an overhang where the rain doesn't show through and particle systems are very dumb because they have to just run on the CPU and just once they're kind of fire and forget once you fire a particle off there's not much you can't really interact with it then you know can't interact with the terrain um <clears throat> so I don't know, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I'd love to get like emitters along the ground that have splashback and maybe even on the player character and all that. So I think it would take a lot to do rain that I'm happy with. I think the embers turned out really well though. That, that, those just took a few minutes and they look quite convincing. The kind of thing, and like I said, I know my own mentality and I know I'm the kind of guy who will endlessly tweak something and get lost in the weeds. Um, so I could probably make tweaks to those embers all day. But I could also kind of see them surviving into a final product. They're really not that bad. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. And I had fun working with them. So I think I'd like to mess around with shaders and particles and stuff and just visual stuff for a while and just see what happens there. Uh, and get away from get away from the player character for a while, you know. Uh, there's still a big mountain to climb with collisions because of the way the player character's bounding box is changing now that they have so many states. I looked it up and I believe the way Super Metroid handled this problem, I don't know, I didn't verify this, but I think it's the case that uh, one of the things they did anyway is that apparently Samus's bounding box is always the same width. So it doesn't matter if you're standing up or you're in morph ball form or, or you're jumping or whatever. Apparently it's always the same width. And I can definitely see how that would make things easier. So I might I might do that or I might just provisionally take that as my solution. I don't know. I do I do want the boxes to match up with things in a reasonable way. But then again, that can be that can be done through animation and sprites and stuff as well. So I just don't know. There's a lot of things to go. I, I don't want to go back to collisions, you know? Collisions are probably the big outstanding thing that should be worked on to get that get those outstanding problems nailed down and just have a really solid system. But uh, fuck, I hated it, man. <laughs> I just fucking hated it. I hated it. Uh, I had a lot more fun on the state machine, even though there is some, some things there and there's probably still some bugs and things. I have a to-do list of things to work out. There's always more to do. Don't want to go back to collision, so I think I'm going to work on some kind of pointless stuff for a while and uh, see what happens. But, you know, people like that. I'm betting a lot of people like the embers in the rain, right? People, I like it. People like it. It doesn't have any effect on the game, but uh, it looks nice. It adds a bit to it, right? 
So I do I do want to work on that stuff and I want to get a bunch of emitters and nice little some, and parts of motion into the world and stuff like that. So uh, where does that leave us? Yeah, what I was saying was it'll probably be a while before I do another video like this because I can't imagine there's going to be... I think the work for the next while is probably going to be scattershot across a bunch of different things and it's not really going to be something I can show off all in one video and neatly and go here, 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 here and they all kind of tie into each other the way these videos have so might be a while but uh, we'll see you never know how it's going to go sometimes I, I don't know what I'm going to work on when I wake up so yeah uh, thanks for watching hope it was interesting just rambling at this point I'll let you go um, and I'll see you again next time whenever that turns out to be bye bye everybody